In this video, I'm going to show you how to take a bunch of articles and format them into a newsletter. The first step is actually copying the articles into your newsletter. We're going to copy them all from these separate documents. The first, we're going to start with the masthead. I'm going to have a couple lines of space in between each article so that afterwards I can tell where each one starts and stops. Once I have my articles in here, I can select everything and I want to click the clear formatting button. This is really useful if you've copied from many different sources because it puts everything back to a basic state, leaving only the normal unformatted text. Once I have this, I can go through and start to apply some styles. Now the styles I'm applying here are for organizing the document. So these are things like, this is the title and this is the subtitle. At this point, I don't really care what these look like. I'm going to add that formatting later. But right now, I just want to make sure that I know what they are. This is a heading, and it's a top-level heading, so I'm going to make it Heading 1. For bylines, I'm going to be using Subtle Emphasis. So I'm just going to go through the document and add this formatting in. I can also use shortcuts like Control-Alt-1 to do Heading 1. add a subtitle for this, and a subtle emphasis here. These names here are also subtle emphasis because they are the names of the people writing it. And then this is actually a heading 2 because it's a subheading in the larger third article. So I'm going to use alt Control 2 or I can go up to the heading 2 choice from the box. We get to our last part down here, we have a heading 1, and then four heading 2's inside. Once I have this formatting in, I don't need the extra spaces between articles that I've input. So I'm going to go through and remove the spaces in between, and any extra spaces that happen to be in the document, like these ones in here. When we're looking at spacing, it's also interesting to look at things like this, where there's more space between these lines than we'd like. To change that, I can actually delete the space and use a shift enter to do a line break instead of a full paragraph break. This makes them nice and close like that. I'm going to do another one of these here. The next step editing this newsletter is doing some spell check. We're going to start off by using the built-in spell checking tool in Word. Go to review and click on spelling and grammar. And it's going to walk us through every spelling and grammar error that Word thinks is in there. You'll notice that some of the ones it comes up with are last names, so we don't want to correct those. And other ones are just Canadian spellings, which we also don't want to change another last name, another Canadian spelling. But then we get some like this one, the island is an idea location. That's probably ideal, so we're going to change that one. And we're going to go through and just check, making sure that we know what the words should be as they go through. Another misspelled word, the wrong type of weather, Canadian spelling. Wrong word, and we've got some names, misspelled word, misspelled word, three names, misspelled word, and we're done. The next thing we're going to do is change the margins on the document. We're going to do this because on a newsletter we want to use as much of the page as possible. So right now these are very wide margins on the outside when really we want smaller ones. To do this we're going to go to page layout, we're going to choose margins, and we're just going to choose moderate margins you'll see that the text moves out to take up more space. After this, we're going to add some content. We want to add headers and footers. 
Headers and footers are the parts at the top and bottom of a document that are the same on every page. So at the top of the page we might want to add a school library newsletter. And we might also want to add the date. We could also add the issue number. Issue 11, say. Footers, on their hand, are at the bottom of the page. And what we usually want to add down there is the page number. So to do that, we can go and go to Insert, and we can choose Page Number. And we're going to choose one for the bottom of the page, maybe that one. Yeah, that one looks pretty good. Okay. Now, this is good, but on the first page, you'll notice that we now have School Library Newsletter, School Library Newsletter. This duplication is um, something we don't want, so often people have a different first page header. To do that, we just open up the headers and we can choose different first page from the ribbon. And now there's no page number and no header on the first page, which is what we want. The next thing to decide in the newsletter is how you want to organize the articles, whether you want them in columns or whether you want to put them into separate sections. In this case, I think that the second article would work well in a separate box on the first page. So I'm going to select the entire article, cut it, and then go up to the first page and go insert a text box. And I'm going to insert a banded sidebar. At this point, I can paste my text into the right side there, making sure that my title is in the title part. And you'll notice that it's too big. It, uh, it actually gets cut off on the bottom. But I can select everything and make it one size smaller. And move the box around and make it a little bit bigger to try and fit everything onto the page. Maybe if I make it a little bit wider here. There we go. Now you'll notice that for my second section I want to, um, I only have two lines left of this paragraph on that page. So I'm going to use a page break, control enter, to push it onto the next page. And then I think I'll put it into two columns to make it a little bit easier to read. So I'm going to go to page layout. I have the text that I want selected. And I go to columns, two. The next thing I want with these columns is to make them justified. That way it'll have a clean edge on this side. So I'm going to select all the text from the first article, go to Home, and choose Justified. There we go. Now the space between these columns is a little bit big. So what I can do is make sure that I have rulers turned on from View Ruler. And then you'll notice that the white part is where the text appears and the gray part is the margin. I can click up into the gray part and drag and change that column margin between them. Okay, now in the last article, I want to make this first part a quotation style because it'll stand out better. So I'm selecting the text, I go into here and I choose quote. For the rest of the article, I'm thinking that three columns will work well. So I'm going to select the text for the first section, go Page Layout, and choose three columns. I want to make it justified. And then I'm going to change it so that it's got smaller margins between the columns. And I'll do the same thing for the rest of the article down here. The reason that I selected this one twice is so that I could get those headings to stay where they were. 
you'll notice that um, this way it has a heading and then all the text and the same thing on the page before. Okay, now it's starting to look good, but you'll notice that in some of these columns, when it's in Justified, you end up with these really large spaces. And this is one of the biggest criticisms of Justified text, that it makes certain lines look um, a little bit out of place. The way that you can fix this problem is by turning on hyphenation. When you turn on auto hyphenation, Word goes through and picks larger words and adds hyphens in the middle of them so that you don't get those large spaces on the lines. And this way it looks a little bit neater. Okay, and so our last article here, um, I'm going to put in two columns so that we get the goals, once again, easier to read. And right now it's one, two, three, and four by itself. But I'm hoping that once we start to um, play around with the formatting above, it will push this down. It'll be one, two on the left and three, four on the right. The next thing I'm going to do is go through the article and add some emphasis and some small formatting things like hyperlinks. So I'm going to add some bold text here for the question and answer. And also for why are we doing this, just to grab people's attention and pull them in. I'm going to italicize this phone number. Um, and here's our first web link. So to insert a web link, you go to insert and you choose hyperlink. And it will choose what web address it should link to and the text display at the top. Um, as I keep going through here, I um, think I'll change how this is a little bit. I'll italicize the date and I'm going to bold the governor's name so it stands out. And the last thing I'm going to add is this hyperlink here. The other way you can add a hyperlink is by right clicking and choosing hyperlink and it does the same thing. And that's all that I'm going to add, but uh, you could go through and you could add a few others if you wanted to. The other emphasis that I want to add is um, something called a drop cap and some small caps. So at the beginning of each article, I'm going to go and I'm going to say insert dropped cap, just like that. And I'm going to select the first few words and go control shift K, which will make it into uh, small caps. This is just signifies that it's the beginning of the section and it's just a stylistic way to show that. So I'll do that at the beginning of each section of the article. So same thing here insert a drop cap and then select the first few words control shift K and they're small caps and the same thing there drop cap control shift K and we have some nice stylistic parts in there the next thing I'm going to do is add some photos to spice up how the document looks. The first article is about the Boston Light, which is a lighthouse uh, near Boston. So I found a picture on Google. I'm going to copy it and I'm just going to paste it into the document here. It's a little bit too big right now, but I can drag the corner handles, always the corners, otherwise you could stretch the photo in a way you don't want it to. Oh, oh, oh gosh. Let's just undo that. There we go. And actually this photo isn't a very close up, isn't very close up on the lighthouse. So I'm going to crop it too. So I'm going to go to format, choose crop, and I'm just going to move it around a little bit. 
uh, maybe catch something like that. And I can make that a little bit bigger. And that's looking pretty good. Now, I also need to change how the text wraps around this photo. If I click here, I can make the text wrap square, which will make the photo fit better around things like that. That's pretty good. Maybe I'll move it a little bit higher up here and put it maybe like that. A little bit smaller. Okay, and the other nice thing about having a photo is that you should have a caption on it so that people know what this is a photo of. So I'm going to right click and choose insert caption. And we'll just write um, the Boston light. Okay, and by default it inserts it with these figure numbers, but uh, you can always just erase those after the fact and they will go away. Um, the last article is about uh, libraries and how important they are. So I'm going to insert a picture of a library um, into there. Again, I found one on Google and I'm just going to go in here and paste it and it, it's fit it into the text nicely. Um, and actually, I think that fits in quite nicely, so I'll just I'll just leave that one how it is. But I'm going to change the wrapping again so that it's square like that. There we go. I'll right click and insert a caption. Um, go. The other thing that we can add is some clip art. Clip art is um, something that is built into Word, so we can go into insert and insert online pictures, and Microsoft has a set of clip art that you can choose from and use for free. In this case, I think that I'm going to use a picture of um, an apple that I'll put on the picture. Apples and education go together really well. I think I'll take this one right here and insert it. Um, now what I want to do with this apple is I'm actually going to put it behind the text. So before I do that, I'm going to change the color and make it um, a little bit lighter and transparent so the text will be legible above it. And then I can change it so that the text wraps behind. And I'll just move it there into the middle of my page. Maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger. Just like that. And move the whole thing up. And there we go. I have a piece of clip art right in there. The last thing that I want to add into my article is some pull quotes. Pull quotes grab your attention, grab the reader's attention when they're going through an article to make them want to read more. Um, in the last article, I'm going to take out this one, school libraries are essential to student achievement, and make a pull quote with that. So I just select the text and copied it, and I'm going to insert a text box and put my text inside. And if we do it like that, it's, it's very boring. It's not really going to work very well. So instead, I'm going to um, get rid of the shape outline and make the text inside a little bit bigger. I could center it. Um, maybe something like that. We can play around with where we put this. Mm, 
maybe a little bit further down. We could put it in here with this other. Maybe something like that. And I'm going to put another pull quote in the first article. Um, I think I'll take the quote, once a teacher, always a teacher, to draw people in. So I've copied that. I'm going to go to insert, another text box. Once a teacher, always a teacher. And again, I need to make it a little bigger. I'm going to get rid of the period, get rid of the shape outline. And this time I'm going to choose a different font too. I think I'll give it a serif font like Cambria to make it stand out. And I'm going to wrap the text really close. So a tight wrapping like that. There we go. Once a teacher, always a teacher. The last step in formatting this newsletter is choosing our own custom styles and fonts to make it look like ours. Now we already used the styles to set the parts of the document, which means that now when we change things, everything will automatically change with it. Uh, the quickest way to do this is to go to design, and we can just change the colors and fonts to choose something that we like. Um, I think I'm going to switch it so that we have a serif uh, heading, like maybe, maybe this one here with Cambria as the heading and Calibri as the rest. Um, or we could try Garamond and Trebuchet. Um, I think I'll go with the first one there, yeah, Cambria and Calibri like that. And I can also just change the colors really quickly. So I can go into color and I can try something a little bit blue, maybe purples. Um, ooh, that's a bit too bright. Green, yellow. Maybe this orange red for the fall. And so when you make these changes with typefaces, it's a good idea to just go through and see if anything was shifted around that needs to be adjusted. Everything mostly looks right. The only thing that stood out to me was right at the beginning. You'll notice that the introduction to the forum got sliced into two. So I'm just going to drag that box a little bit wider. There we go. And there we are. School library newsletter. We can zoom out and get a better look of the whole thing, how it feels on the page.